This week on today's Air Force, General Welsh lays down his expectations. We will not accept or allow that type of behavior. We'll say farewell to one of the Air Force's greatest assets to deploy overseas. It's been constantly deployed to Afghanistan for almost 12 years now. And we'll learn what it takes to go on tour in Afghanistan. We'll have all those stories and more right now on today's Air Force. Hello and welcome to today's Air Force. I'm Technical Sergeant Nicholas Kurtz. Thanks for joining us. We've got a full lineup for you today, so let's get right to it. Integrity first. It's the chief core value for airmen across the world. But for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile or ICBM officers from Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana, the meaning of integrity is being reiterated after 34 officers came under investigation for cheating on ICBM launch officer proficiency tests. The Air Force Office of Special Investigations was looking into allegations of illegal drug possession when evidence surfaced suggesting that a missile launch officer at the 341st Missile Wing shared answers to monthly missile launch proficiency tests with 16 other officers. The Air Force Chief of Staff addressed the issue head on in a press conference, bringing us to this week's Straight from the Top. This is not about the compromise of nuclear weapons. It's about compromise of the integrity of some of our airmen. It's about a violation of that first core principle of integrity first. Our actions as we move forward will be about making sure that every member of our Air Force understands that we will not accept or allow that type of behavior. That there is nothing more important to the nation than the integrity and the trustworthiness of the people who defend it. And that anyone who doesn't understand that should find another line of work. In response to the breach, the 34 officers have been decertified, restricted from duty, and have had their security clearances suspended. Secretary of the Air Force Deborah Lee James ordered all of the members of the ICBM force to be retested immediately to ensure confidence in the nuclear mission. Now, according to Pentagon Press Secretary Rear Admiral John Kirby, 95% of the airmen who have been retested passed, with 11 remaining to be tested. The 22 officers who failed following the retest will be immediately retrained and retested. Well, airmen around the Air Force work hard every day to test themselves and their team members in an effort to define their unit's strengths while working to improve any shortcomings. For our first story today, we'll travel across the world to Osan Air Base, South Korea, to see how medics test their abilities to respond, even in the worst scenarios. This helicopter is carrying one of more than 100 patients these medics will have seen by the end of the day. It's all part of a mass casualty exercise where the 51st Medical Group practices their tried and true methods of treating as many patients as possible as fast as possible. The first step is getting them to the hospital. Doing a triage, initial triage of all the patients that they just brought in, which is about 20. Uh, they have in three different categories. They're putting them in an immediate, delayed, and minimal. The triage process is the second step in a patient's path to care. But if someone is seriously hurt, the process gets a lot tougher. Lieutenant Colonel Ramon Tolliver is in the operating room, where he has to make the difficult but necessary decisions. During a mass casualty, you cannot save every patient as you would try to save everyone during a peacetime operation. So sometimes you have to make a hard decision to allow some certain patients not to make it or to die just because it would take too many resources to try to save everyone. Eyes remain closed. No okay. at all. You try to do the most good for the most people. Lieutenant Colonel Tolliver and his unit had a successful exercise. The 51st Medical Group was able to treat 151 patients in 12 hours. Senior Airman Corey Schuler, Osan Air Base, Korea. 28. This is the average number of funerals that take place at the Arlington National Cemetery every day. Even so, it's not every day that the Air Force Honor Guard has the privilege of laying to rest an Air Force legend. Staff Sergeant Peter Ising has more. Brigadier General Robinson Reisner died October 22nd at his home in Bridgewater, Virginia. Today, Reisner is being buried in Arlington National Cemetery with full military honors. General Reisner was one of the most decorated and celebrated jet fighter aces in Air Force history. 
During the Korean War, Reisner flew more than 100 combat missions, becoming America's 20th jet ace by shooting down eight Soviet-made MiG fighters. After the war, he was chosen to fly an F-100 Super Sabre named the Spirit of St. Louis II to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Charles Lindbergh's transatlantic flight. Major Risner, in piloting the new Super Sabre from the West Coast factory to McGuire Air Force Base, set an unofficial cross-country record. Now he's out to better officially the transatlantic crossing record. He did it in six hours and 37 minutes, a fifth of Lindbergh's time. In Vietnam, General Reisner received the Air Force Cross for bravery. Time magazine put a portrait of him on the cover of its April 23, 1965 issue as an example of the modern American warrior. Afterwards, his jet was shot down in Vietnam and Reisner became a prisoner of war. I will always remember Robbie Reisner and the inspiration that he provided to those of us who had the honor of serving with him. He inspired us to do things that we otherwise would never have been capable of. And Robbie Reisner will live in the memory of all of us who honor genuine American Hello. heroes. General Reisner received another Air Force Cross for his gallantry as a prisoner of war. His many other medals include Hello. the Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, the Silver Star, and the Distinguished Flying Cross. General Reisner was 88 years old and leaves behind his loving wife Dorothy, his six children, and 14 grandchildren. In life, General Robinson Reisner honored the flag, and in death, the flag now honors him. Reporting from Arlington National Cemetery, I'm Staff Sergeant Peter Ising. Coming up, an aircraft that's flown combat missions for more than 40 years flies its last combat sortie when today's Air Force returns. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Every single piece of recyclable waste counts. But only every piece that is diverted makes a difference. When each piece adds to the next, everyone's effort begins to take shape. Diverting waste sustains the mission. The mission starts here. Win the war against waste. Slow down. Slow down and move over. And move over. When you see lights, vests, all reflectors. Please, give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us. We've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please. Slow down. And move over. Welcome back to today's Air Force. Let's get straight to it and take a look at the headlines. With the headlines, I'm Senior Airman Renee Carberry. Late last week, the 23rd Secretary of the Air Force, Deborah Lee James, was ceremoniously sworn in by Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel at the Pentagon. Secretary Hagel called Secretary James well-suited to lead the Air Force as the nation faces an increasingly uncertain security environment. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force James Cody has released his latest edition of Roll Call in which he discusses force management and gives transition guidance. Roll Call is designed to help keep airmen informed on current issues, dispel rumors and provide additional communication for supervisors and airmen. Research proposals have paid off big this year for the Air Force's Young Investigator Research Program. The program earned 42 scientists and engineers from 32 research institutions approximately $15.5 million in grants. And that does it for the headlines. I'm Senior Airman Renee Carberry. As the war in Afghanistan and our involvement in it winds down, the era for the AC-130H Spectre gunship has also come to an end. With more than 40 years in service, the gunship is one of the most versatile and oldest aircraft to work in the AOR. We'll take a look now at how the airmen of the 16th Expeditionary Special Operations Squadron bid farewell. Sometimes the mere sound of having the AC-130 overhead is enough to break the will of our enemy. They know that if they choose tonight to fight, 
they may very well understand better our squadron motto that you can run but you'll only die tired This aircraft is a cast platform, that means close air support. Close air support is very difficult to do because your biggest concern is anti-fratricide, not hurting the good guys on the ground. Uh, what, the, way, the reason we do that really well is one, we can stay overhead for a long period of time. We're a uh, left side or a side shooting platform and a constant pylon turn. So basically, uh, we can put rounds down on just about any part of the area at any time within seconds if we're needed to. And we're very accurate. Props. Probably know the H model right now. It's the oldest gunship we have still in service. It's been constantly deployed to Afghanistan for almost 12 years now. Uh, so, as you can imagine, we take to heart the fact that we're going to be leaving this AO soon because it's kind of been our war for the last 12 years. Like, I don't think we'll be coming back. They're going to probably retire these aircraft within the next year. And the big thing about this specific type of platform you see right behind us here is that this airframe and all the H model airframes were ones that were flying in Vietnam. It's, it's the ex exact same airframe just with upgrades to it over time. All, going all the way back to 1968, 1969, people have been flying on this exact airframe itself in defense of our country. So for a lot of people everywhere, it's, it'll be very sad to see the, the H model go away. As uh, the new gunships come out and they have a lot more technology on board and less people, having more technology is great because it lets us be able to do the same amount of stuff with less people on board, but at the same time you don't have everybody that is a specialist in their specific career field or their specific crew position. But I think it'll be fine because everything's going to evolve over time and as we get used to doing our new mission with the new equipment, eventually we'll be able to provide the same type of support that the H model gunship's been providing for the over 40 years. As, as we begin to uh, retire the AC-130H, I, I view that as more of a, a closing of one chapter and, and the beginning of another. So that's why I believe we'll be able to carry uh, you know, our heritage and uh, our, our way of thinking uh, and our pride in that unit um, into the next airplane. The airplane is a tool. That tool is utilized by the, you know, the, the people on board to execute whatever mission that they, they find themselves in. So certainly sad to retire this airplane. It means a great deal to me and, and to many others. But like I said, it's a tool and uh, we're, we're ready to, to get the next uh, more advanced tool out and, uh, and, and be ready to use it as well. We have enemy QRF approaching 300 meters from the east. Now let's take a look at what's going on around the Air Force this week in photos. Royal Air Force pilots participating in this year's red flag exercise step away from their aircraft for a debrief following a training mission at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. Arkansas Air National Guard A-10 Warthogs conduct a final formation flight over the state of Arkansas before being replaced with unmanned aerial vehicles. Firefighters practice making low entrances, ensuring they are safe from heated gases escaping from facilities during a training scenario at Yokota Air Base, Japan. Before the setting sun, U-2 pilots prepare to land a Tu-2S Dragon Lady at Beale Air Force Base, California. 
And that's This Week in Photos. I'm Staff Sergeant Chris Piles. Coming up, we'll learn what it takes to throw a music tour together while serving in a remote location when today's Air Force returns. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. <laughs> That's my boy. That's my boy! Right there. That one. That's my boy. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like to be. I don't know what it's like to be in a war. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like to be, to be shot at. To be shot at. To be put in harm's way. To put my life on the line. I don't know what it's like. But I do know no one comes back the same. No matter how tough you are, how, how brave, how patriotic, anybody can get hurt. And not just physically hurt. If you're a service member or in a military family and you're feeling hopeless, you're not alone. Please call this number. It's confidential and free. Your family needs you. We need you. Thank you for your service. Welcome back to today's Air Force. I'm Technical Sergeant Nicholas Kurtz. 15 days, 19 shows, over 4,500 pounds of equipment, and more than 3,000 deployed service members. For our next story, we'll hear from Staff Sergeant Kelly Perry as she shares a first-hand account of her tour through Afghanistan as the lead singer for the Afcent band, Systems Go. Well, we went to Afghanistan and we went to four different places. Yes, that was my first time in Afghanistan. Woo! It was interesting. We got there. As soon as we started getting our gear off the pallet, incoming, incoming, IDF. It's a rude awakening <laughs> when your life is uh, put in that position. Your life, everyone's, and then someone said, sing us a song. She's like, wow, this is what we're doing. Here we are. I'm singing in a bunker. There it is. Singing Killing me softly with his song. Killing me softly. It makes you think about everything right then and there. What you have and what you could lose all in one moment and some people have that's ugh ooh wee all clear emergency terminated resume operations for initiating I'm married Repeat. to a military member he is security forces it'll be 8 years so we are getting a whole other kind of perspective for me being deployed. I'm used to being at home when he's deployed. It has been stressful. It's, it's been hard, but it has made us grow. I call him super dad at home because we also have Hello. a fi almost five-year-old daughter, Lauren. <gasps> Boomy! I want, let me see your face real quick. <gasps> there you are! Oh my gosh! Lauren, you're... You're watching what? Guess what, Mama? Guess what? Guess what? What? I'm watching Christmas, Mama. Oh, yeah, we all did. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, we all did. Oh, I got a little Let me talk to Daddy for just a second, okay? Hey, bun. How have we grown over the years? She's crazy. Being 21 when you get married, you are figuring out yourself. Along with that came some tragedy in my life uh, 
right after he proposed to me, it was two weeks, and I, I dealt with the hardest thing in my life, which was my older brother, who's six years older than me, committed suicide. It was super hard. That happened. We got married in January, and he was deployed in February. So lots of tests in our relationship right from the very beginning of our relationship. We are stronger today than we ever have been. Sometimes in life you can't control the things that are going to happen. And, but there are certain things that you can. And that's you stay and you communicate about it and you keep loving each other. All right. I am from Kentucky, so we got to start with a little country. And that's what we've done. When we're out there, we just are, we're just the vessel and we give whatever we can. And a lot of it is deep conversations with people to just do a job, like on earth, not just for the band. It's not always about the band and the Air Force. It's about just having a purpose where we stand and the moments that God brings to us. We're ready. I would say the reason why we work so well together, number one, is we respect each other. We respect each other's space and who we are as a person as individuals, and we have had a lot of time to do that. That's not very good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody came in with this attitude going, I want to be here, we're, we're going to do this thing, and we're going to do it well. And so we just have fun. At the end of the day, we enjoy each other because we appreciate what we bring to the table um, for to be a musician. Hey, will you marry me? Come on, everybody. I know you know this part. And I said, no, no. Not the one for me. Check it out. Check it out. Not the one for me. What did you say, baby? No, no. Oh, yeah. oh, what did you say? To me? I said, no, no, no. Did you say it? I always call them moments that happen. It's just, there's always moments and you can't buy that. They were the reason why you woke up every morning. That was it. Not yourself. It's not about us. It's about them. And I remember being asked, how do you do this every day? <laughs> and before uh, the show, I was like, you know, I'm not sure. I know it's not about me. And then I knew right away, as soon as we started that show, it, that's what it is. It's about the people. When I'm able to give back in any way that I can with my job, because it's not always singing. 
you know, this is the thing is that after the show, you get stories. It's the door that opens that allows people to come and tell a story. And we that is the part that makes me whole is when I get to help someone through music, through a conversation, that is part of my job too. And that is what makes me, my world go round. Because if I was working and not being able to help, then there's no purpose. And if there's no purpose, I don't need to be doing it. And that does it for this edition of today's Air Force. For all of us here at the Defense Media Activity at Fort Meade, Maryland, I'm Tech Sergeant Nicholas Kurtz. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This week on Today's Air Force, General Welsh lays down his expectations. We will not accept or allow that type of behavior. We'll say farewell to one of the Air Force's greatest assets to deploy overseas. It's been constantly deployed to Afghanistan for almost 12 years now. And we'll learn what it takes to go on tour in Afghanistan. We'll have all those stories and much more on the next edition of Today's Air Force.
This week on today's Air Force, General Welsh lays down his expectations. We will not accept or allow that type of behavior. We'll have that story and more on the next edition of today's Air Force.